In this video, I'll show you the top 10 things to do in Malta. In the past, somewhat overlooked by travellers for other European destinations, this beautiful little Mediterranean island has grown in popularity in recent years, and rightly so. Malta is well known for its crystal clear seas and the fact it gets more than 300 days of sun a year, but there's so much more to this wonderful country that is so rich in history and I'll help you know how to make the most of your trip here. And for more tips and travel content, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell. Number 1. Where better to start than the capital of Malta? Valletta. Founded in 1566, Valletta is one of the smallest capital cities in Europe. But despite its size, it is packed with sites of historical significance dating back to the 16th century and an array of buildings with strong Baroque architecture. It's no wonder that the whole city was officially listed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site back in 1980. Valletta is a great place to kick off your trip to Malta with so much to see and do like visiting the National Museum of Archaeology, capturing some amazing panoramic views of Malta as well as spectacular cannon salutes at Upper Baraka Gardens or indulging in a delicious meal at Soto Pinto Romana where they have the best tiramisu I've ever tasted. Now Valletta wasn't always the capital of Malta. So at number two, I'm going to show you the old capital, Emdina. Otherwise known as the silent city due to its fortified walls and strict vehicle restrictions, Emdina is a beautiful example of medieval and baroque architecture and spending time here will be a lot more peaceful than other things listed in this video. Famed for its association with the Apostle Paul, who it is said got shipwrecked on the islands in 60 AD and also for being the filming location for King's Landing in the first season of Game of Thrones, Emdina is definitely a place I'd recommend during your trip to take in some history and even try some traditional Maltese delicacies, but we'll get onto that a bit later. Next up is St Julian's, a town along the northern coastline of Malta and probably the most urban place on the island, St Julian's is a generally busier and more built up area in Malta. It's where I stayed during my trip as it's quite well connected to other attractions and there's loads of restaurants that you can visit along the promenade around Spinola Bay. One I recommend you check out is Laura and Fitch Steakhouse, which is where I had by far the best meal during my time in Malta. Man, I could do one of those steaks right now. Anyway, St Julian's is also particularly popular amongst young people, with Pachaville being a district known as a hub for nightlife and entertainment. But there is also St George's Bay nearby which is enjoyed by people of all ages. Keep watching though if sandy beaches is what you're looking for. Number 4 is Blue Lagoon. Located on the island of Camino, Blue Lagoon is one of Malta's not so hidden gems. It's a bucket list location known for its stunning crystal clear waters and jagged cliffs. The water is literally so clear it's like being in a swimming pool. But look at this, look at this water man, beautiful. The island Blue Lagoon belongs to, Camino, is so fascinating itself, with literally only two inhabitants across the whole island. So if you find Blue Lagoon a bit too crowded, then Camino makes the perfect location for a peaceful hike or wander through the plethora of wildflowers and herbs, especially cumin, which is where Camino's Maltese name, Kimuna, comes from. You can travel to Blue Lagoon and Camino via boat or ferry from Sliema, where you can also visit Crystal Lagoon and the caves of Camino too. Number 5 and the second largest of the Maltese islands is Gozo. Perhaps deserving of its own video, visiting Gozo was a true highlight of my time in Malta and something I really recommend you do. With popular locations like Citadella, Tapunu and what is the remaining of the Azure window after it sadly collapsed in 2017, Gozo has so much rich history and natural beauty to offer. I truly believe it is an underrated place and a must visit during your trip to Malta. The ferries to Gozo from Valletta are fairly frequent, running every 45 minutes until late and it costs just under 5 euro for a return ticket. Unless you're in a car, then it's around 10 euro more. To really get a feel for a country or place you visit, I believe it's so important to try the local cuisine and so the next thing you should do is try some Maltese delicacies. First up is pastizzi, which is the plural name for pastiz, a delicious traditional savoury pastry that is usually filled with ricotta or curried peas. You can get this from the popular Crystal Palace in Nemdina, but they sell it all over Malta. Maltese people, they love this stuff. Yeah? Let me try it. 
You can also try rabbit, which is the main ingredient to Malta's national dish, stufa telfenek, and then there is also Maltese bread. It's very dry, and look, I'm squeezing it, and it's still barely moving. It's a no for me. Now, I eat everything, and there's not much food I don't like, but while my expectations were very high, I did find Maltese bread to be a bit hard, I still recommend you try it though and decide for yourself. You can also try Kinney, a popular Maltese drink that is likened to Marmite in the UK because you'll either love it or hate it. It's a zesty drink that starts off sweet at first and then it's bitter. It's bit okay. <laughs> I was going to say it's barely bitter but then it hits me. It kind of tastes like iron brew. Just like the time I was on the island boat tour in Thailand and I had some amazing chicken fried rice that well, the next day gave me food poisoning. Anyway, enough about food poisoning and rabbit. Let's move on to number seven, Rabat. Located adjacent to previously mentioned Mdena, Rabat is a beautiful little town that is known for some of its archeological and historical sites. Rabat is such a beautiful place to go for a relaxing stroll or even a free walking tour. And if you get a bit peckish after that, make sure you check out one of the local cafes or eateries like my earlier recommendation, Crystal Palace Bar, for a quick bite. And if you're even hungrier than that, I recommend you take a quick walk into Medina for some Maltese fine dining at the Medina restaurant, where you can have some Medina. That's at least two corny jokes now. So make sure you subscribe and smash the bell icon like your life depends on it for more corny jokes and travel tips too. The next thing you should do in Malta is visit a sandy beach or three. Malta is blessed with several beaches all over its islands, but three of the most popular sandy beaches are Golden Bay, a blue flag beach in the northwestern coast of the island where you can sunbathe, have barbecues and even meet parrots. Then there's Malia Bay, which is in the same area of Malia and the biggest and most popular beach in Malta. Here you can take your pick at a variety of water sports, tanning in the glorious Maltese sun, or indulge in the usual beach activities. And you can also check out Ramla Bay, which is yet another thing you can do when you take a day trip out to Gozo. It's also known as the Red Sand Beach and it's probably the best beach on the island. The perfect place to swim, snorkel or chill out in the sun is loved by both locals and tourists. Keep watching till the end by the way for a bonus attraction that is another local favourite. Moving on to number 9, it's Dingley Cliffs. Located on Malta's west coast at 253 metres above sea level, the Dingley Cliffs are the highest point of the Maltese islands with perhaps the best panoramic view in Malta. I just absolutely love this view right here though. Take a look. The cliffs themselves are a majestic sight to be seen, especially from a boat or a viewpoint nearby like St Magdalena Church, but the view from the cliffs of the Mediterranean Sea and surrounding areas is simply spectacular and the perfect thing to do at sunset. You can get a bus, taxi or even hike it to Dingley Cliffs and I'd recommend you take a camera too, and maybe even a picnic. Number 10. Marsaschlok a charming fishing village in southern Malta, famous for its colourful lutsu boats, picturesque harbour and Sunday fish market. It's also known to have some of the finest seafood restaurants on the island, as well as Fort de Limara, which is one of many forts built by the British in the 1800s, and it was also used in a 2016 Assassin's Creed movie. Master Schlock is a great place to visit, where you can relax along the promenade, spend time people watching, and really diving into the depths of Maltese culture. And speaking of diving, that brings me on to our bonus attraction. A short drive from Master Schlock is St Peter's Pool, a stunning natural inlet of azure and light green surrounded by smooth flat surface limestone rock. Popular with sunbathing fanatics, fans of swimming in crystal clear water, and lovers of cliff diving, St Peter's Pool is a real not so hidden gem in Malta. If you do plan on visiting, I'd recommend getting there nice and early because it can get pretty packed later in the day. And that's the top 10 things that you can do in Malta. Drop a comment below if you found this video useful or if there's anywhere else you think deserves a mention and make sure you check out some more of the Malta videos and travel content on my channel.